Hi guys! Based on what we have learned in the previous lesson, there are three ways of how we can classify a protein, based on their level of organization, structure, and composition. We have learned about the level of organization in detail in the previous lesson. Now let's have a look on how to classify a protein based on their structure and composition. Based on their structure, as you can see, there are two groups here. The first group is that it will form a fiber. So therefore, we group them into a group called fibrous protein. The example of fibrous protein is collagen and also carotene. As you could have guessed, fibrous protein will mainly form the structural component of your body parts. For example, your hair, your nails, and your skin. They are mostly insoluble in water. This is why your hair doesn't dissolve and disappear when you take a shower. Since they form fibers, they lack tertiary structure. Because as we have learned in the previous video, tertiary structure refers to when a protein begins to form a globule. The long polypeptide strands will be arranged parallel to each other or side by side to each other forming a fiber. Now the second group will fold into a compact 3D structure, forming a globule. Hence, they are grouped within a globular protein group. The example includes hemoglobin and myoglobin. Since they form globule, they will have tertiary structure, and some can even have complex quaternary level structure. The polypeptide chain will form into globules, and most globular protein performs metabolic functions, for example, like enzymes. So therefore, they need to fold into globules with pockets that form the active side. Since we know that most reaction takes place in water, so globular protein mostly are soluble in water. To classify proteins based on their composition is really quite simple. We have simple proteins, which refer to proteins that does not have any other substances, just purely amino acids. For example, albumin that can be commonly found within egg whites. This is why bodybuilders like to eat eggs. Since it is rich in protein only, which is important for their muscle growth. The second group of protein is known as conjugated proteins. Conjugated proteins contain other substances which are not protein. For example, if they contain lipid, the protein is now known as lipoprotein. If the protein contain carbohydrate, we call them as glycoprotein. And as an extra information, if the protein contain nucleic acid, it will form nucleoprotein. Examples of conjugated proteins include myoglobin and hemoglobin. This is because both have heme group in them. Function of protein very much depends on its conformation. For example, look at this protein. It could be an enzyme. An enzyme folded into a particular conformation so that it can form pockets that will act as active sites. And we know that the conformation of protein is maintained by various interactions within the protein molecules between the backbone that give rise to the secondary level protein structure, alpha helix and beta pleated sheet, through hydrogen bonding, and also various interaction between the side chains of amino acid residues in the polypeptide chain. As I have told you to remember, hydrogen bond, ionic bond, disulfide bridge, hydrophobic interaction, and van der Waals interaction. If these interactions and bonds begin to be disturbed, the conformation of a protein will start to change. So therefore, causing the shape of the pockets that make up the active site begin to change and making the substrate can no longer fit into the active site.
In extreme conditions that can disintegrate all these interactions and bonds, your proteins will be completely denatured and completely unfolded, like this. So let's have a look at the factors that could cause a protein to denature. The first one is too high temperature. From what we have learned during secondary school, we know that beyond the optimum temperature, increasing the temperature will no longer increase enzyme activity. This is because when the temperature is too high, it will cause all the bonds, hydrogen bond, ionic bond, disulfide bridge, hydrophobic interaction, and van der Waals interaction that's holding the protein in its shape to be broken down. This causes the protein to denature substrate can no longer bind into its active site, so that's why you see the rate of reaction for the enzyme falls down dramatically. The other factor that will cause protein to denature is extreme pH. From what we have learned during secondary school, we know that proteins have a very narrow pH range in which it can work at its best. This is because there is different concentration of H+, and OH- at different pH, thus affecting the hydrogen bond and ionic bond that holds protein in its shape. Once these two interactions are affected by changing pH, the protein will lose its conformation and therefore loses its function.